Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Brad Walter, and uh, today for our lesson, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, VMC and how it's determined. Um, so this is a topic that when I went through my multi-engine training, um, I didn't fully understand. Um, I knew what VMC was. I just didn't, uh, I didn't fully grasp how it was determined what the VMC speed was for your plane. So uh, that's why I put this lesson together because now I do understand and hopefully uh, I can help somebody else and get a better grasp on it. All right, so let's start off with the definition of VMC. Uh, VMC is the minimum control airspeed um, at which the airplane is directionally controllable as determined by the FAA. Um, and then also there may be some slight variations uh, per the POH for whatever plane you're flying. Um, but in general, uh, what the FAA says they determine VMC with is um, the airplane condition including, um, to include one engine becoming inoperative and windmilling, so not all the way feathered, uh, not more than five degree bank towards the operative engine, takeoff power on the operating engine, and landing gear up, flaps in the takeoff position, and most rearward uh, CG. So that's, our, that's how the FAA defines uh, what VMC is. All right, now let's take a little uh, closer look at um, how VMC is determined. So this is the part that kind of threw me off. Um, when I went through my multi-engine training, I just memorized the acronym that probably a lot of us have used, SMACFOM, and um, I just kind of pushed the I believe button. Okay, to me, it seemed like through that list, it was the most unfavorable conditions that the plane could be in, which is true for for most of these yes um, but some of them not necessarily the most unfavorable but what it comes down to is this is how the vmc speed for your plane has been determined and that's what the um, fa wants you to use or wants manufacturers or test pilots to use to determine what the vmc speed is so let's go through the list um, it says maximum available takeoff power uh, and in some cases, it'll say max available takeoff power at sea level. Um, so that'll be POH specific, whether you're at sea level or not. Uh, propeller windmilling in takeoff pitch or feathered if the aircraft is, is equipped with auto feather. So again, another aircraft specific thing. Um, I'm flying currently flying a Seminole, does not auto feather. Uh, therefore, the prop would be windmilling. That is also unfavorable. Um, due to the drag that the windmilling propeller produces. That maximum available takeoff power on the operating engine is also unfavorable because you're producing a lot of thrust on the operating engine wanting to push the aircraft um, to the opposite direction that the engine running is on. Uh, then most unfavorable or aft center of gravity. <clears throat> so the reason for that is unfavorable is because it shortens the arm that your rudder has to work off of. Uh, and then it says maximum takeoff weight or any lesser weight necessary to show VMC. So this one, uh, some people think of it as negative. It is negative in relation to performance, but is actually a positive when it comes to uh, VMC. So uh, you'll read that it it gives the aircraft somewhat of a keel effect and makes it a little bit more stable when the aircraft is heavier. Um, so therefore, it's when it comes to VMC, heavier weight is favorable, um, but when it comes to performance, it's less favorable. Uh, landing gear retracted. This, for performance, is good because it's less drag, but for VMC, um, it actually uh, will increase your VMC with your uh, landing gear retracted because of the distribution of drag. And that's the same thing with wings and cowl flaps. Um, in the takeoff position, for so for the Seminole that I'm flying, uh, we take off of the flaps up. Um, so that would be favorable for performance, but not favorable for VMC. And then trim for takeoff, um, that's not really gonna negatively affect your performance or VMC that much. Uh, and then airborne and out of ground effect. So obviously out of ground effect, you are your drag has increased a little bit at that point. Um, <clears throat> so that will have a negative effect on your performance. Uh, so as you can see, as we went through that list, um, there are positives and negatives to VMC. 
and then also positive negatives to performance. So that's kind of that that line that I didn't differentiate when I initially uh, went through this list. I was just assuming they all related directly to VMC, but there are some that relate to VMC and some that relate to the performance of the aircraft, but these are the conditions that they test VMC for your aircraft. So in conclusion, and the lesson that I learned from uh, studying about VMC is make sure you understand what you're memorizing. Don't just memorize an acronym and then move on. Make sure you know what exactly you're trying to memorize and know how VMC and performance are, for, for, are affected, not just VMC or just performance. And these are the two references that I used to put this presentation together. Um, if you have not read Flying Light Twin, Twin Safely uh, by the FAA, I strongly recommend uh, reading through that. It's a great resource. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed.